In this video, we're going to conclude the work that we've done with divs and HTML and JavaScript. So in the last video, we left off creating this gradient kind of pattern. And we said that in the next video, so that would be this video, we're going to try and generate something similar to this. Okay, so this will be using a lot of the techniques and things that we've went over in the last several videos. So um, I think what we're going to do is this is our gradient pattern here. This is the source code for this file. So we're going to go ahead and mod just modify this. And we're going to go ahead and set up a couple of uh, variables here. So the first thing is we're going to have a variable called size, and that's going to be the height and width of each square. So if I go over to the, what this looks like, each square, I think, in this is 20 pixels. We'll set it to whatever we want. So in this case, we'll just we'll make it 20. Okay, and then we'll have the number of squares in each row. So we'll make 50 squares. So in other words, we'll have 50 total squares. Each one of them is 20 pixels wide. So that'll be or 20 pixels tall. So that'll be 1,000 total pixels. And then we can have uh, 50 might be too many. Maybe maybe instead of 50, we'll do 30. And um, columns we'll have is 50 because this, the screen is a lot wider than it is tall, so we'll have more columns. Okay, and so now what we need to do, we don't need this grad anymore. So we will say um, for i equals zero, i is less than rows, i plus plus, and then we will do another for loop and we'll do for j equals zero, j is less than columns, j++, plus plus. so we're going to make a nice little grid pattern here. Go ahead and put in this empty or closing curly brace here. All right, so now we're going to create a div. All right, now here's for the color, what we're going to do is we're going to set this variable grad. Actually, we'll, just, we'll change this to, uh, maybe we'll change this to just RGB or something, I don't know. Okay, so we need the variable RGB, so we'll do var RGB, and this is where we'll do the math.random, and we'll put in 256. Okay, so this will generate a random, oh, I'm sorry, math.random generates a number between 0 and 1. We'll multiply that by 256 to give us a number between 0 and 255. Okay, and so we'll leave this color the same. And so now the only thing we need to do is change this style string. So we'll have the height equal to size uh, plus size plus. We'll have the width plus size. Okay, and now the top, so we're going to need one more variable, or two more variables here. We'll have top will be equal to um, i times rows, and the uh, column CL will be equal to j times columns. Okay, so in other words, uh, this is to prevent having to do the i plus equals 20 or whatever, so this will do... Uh, 0, 20. So in other words, top will be 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, etc. Okay? And same thing with columns. So um, now back here in our style string, we're going to change this to plus top plus and we'll change the left to CL. Okay? And that should basically be all that we need in order for this to work. So let's go ahead and see if this works. All right, so that's our divs. And if we go here, oh, okay. You'll notice that we kind of got there. Um, looks like we have a, log a logic error in our code somewhere. This seems to be all over the place. So let's see what we have going on here. I want this to be i times size. Yeah, okay. All right, so that's the, so the problem is, is that we need, instead of rows and calls, we need this to be i times size and j times size. Yeah, that was kind of stupid. Okay. 
So uh, we save that. Um, we can refresh this. And now it looks the way that we expect. Okay. Now you notice this one is red. The other one that we did was blue. Okay. So now I want to show you a couple of tricks that we can do here. Um, suppose that instead of, let's suppose we wanted a slightly lighter shade. So this runs the entire gamut from white all the way to the full red color. Maybe we only want to have like the lighter shades of red. Okay. So the way that we can do that is we can, instead of making this random times 256, we can make this 128 plus, and then we'll do 128. So now what this is going to do is this is going to return us, the, the result is that RGB is always going to be a number between 128 and 256, which is the lighter shade of red. So if we save that and refresh, you will see that now it's much, much lighter. So we're only getting the lighter shades. And of course, if we wanted to just do the darker shades, we could do that as well. So we will just remove this. And so now RGB will only be a number between 0 and 128. So that will only give us the darker shades of red. Okay. And you see, sure enough, it's the darker shades. Okay. Now if we want to go back to the full complement, we can do that. And that gives us the full spectrum. Okay, and then of course if we wanted to change the color, maybe we don't want red. Maybe let's let's do green instead. So we could just go ahead and um, we'll have RGB here. And then in the middle is where we'll have our full green color. Okay, so in other words, the green is going to be maximum green, and then the other two, red and blue, are going to be the RGBs. And so now if we look at this, you'll see that now we've got greens, okay? And you can sit here and play around with these different numbers to experiment with, like, for example, what if instead of 255, what if we did... Uh, what if we did uh, 110? Okay, there's a random number there. All right. Okay, you see this gives us this kind of weird purpley color. All right. Sort of a purpley kind of a green color. All right. And so you can mess around with these different values to see uh, what kinds of different effects you can make. Anyway, that's, uh, oh, I guess one more thing that I'll show you is instead of making this a fixed size between 50 squares and 30, let's make it the exact size of the browser window. So what we can do is instead of doing 30, okay, we can make the rows equal to, um, um, I think it's screen dot window dot can't remember if it's screen.window. We'll try window.screen.height. And then we'll make this divided by size. And then here we'll do window.screen.width divided by size. Let's see if I've got that one right. Okay, yep, so there you go. So you see now it's exactly, oops, now you see it's, now it's a little bit taller because of all of this real estate right here, okay, but it's pretty close. Okay, and yeah, so that's basically it. Um, I would encourage you to go ahead and get on here, play around with some of these values, put in different numbers, try different colors out, and see what kind of uh, interesting pattern you can create.